Another one of the more interesting controls that's part of Scala FX is the table view. As the name implies, this displays a table of data. So you have rows and columns. But the way that it works is actually quite interesting. So we're going to open a file. I called it tableview.scala. And it has our template here. So let's give it a title of table view. Now, each row in this table is associated with an element of data. For our table, I want to display information on some students. So I will make a case class for a student, and each student will have a name that is a string, and then we'll just go with two different grades, a test one, which is an int, and a test two, which is an int. Okay. So every row in our table will represent one of these. We can come down inside of here and we can make a table view. So in order to do that, we say val table equals new table view. And we have to pass it the data that we want to display. So I'll say that we're going to call that data. And let's go ahead and declare our data. <clears throat> One thing about the table view is the data that we pass in, we can't use a list or array. That's actually specific that it has to use something called an observable buffer. We'll talk in a few videos about the observable types. But for now, just know that we're going to use an observable buffer. And we need to import that if we want to be able to work with it. So import Scala fx dot collection dot observable buffer okay and it's collections plural sorry and inside of here we're going to go ahead and put our students just like we would with an array or a list so we're in some ways as far as the syntax goes, there's nothing special. It, we're going to create it instead of saying list and then giving a bunch of students, we're going to say observable buffer and give it a bunch of students. So student, our first one will be Jane Doe. And Jane made a 99 on her first test and a 93 on the second test. I need a comma. We'll have another student. This will be John Doe, and John made a 73 on the first test, and then picked things up and made an 88 on the second test. And whoops, I put a quote there. We'll put a third student in here, uh, Bob Builder, and Bob made an 85 on the first test, and a 91 on the second test. Okay, so there's three students and the idea is each one of these students is going to be a separate row inside of this table. We can go ahead, we can kind of add the table in. Now instead of setting the, the table to be the content, I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. I'm going to say the table equals is assigned to be the root. So root equals table. The difference between table between root and content is that with content you are allowed to give it a whole list of things. You can give it just one thing. But the thing that you put there, or whatever things you put there, are not kind of set up to fill the whole window. With root, you only get to put one thing over here. The syntax of making a list doesn't work. In this case, I want the table to be the only thing, or kind of the top level thing. Uh, we'll see that we can nest stuff and, and make it so that we build more complex layouts in a different way uh, in a bit. But I want this table to fill the entire window, and I want to make it so that if the window gets bigger or smaller, the table will adjust to that. And in order to make that happen, I need to set it to be the root. Let's see how many typos I have here. Scala FX of table view. Not found type table view. Oh, indeed. I have an import with label here, but I'm not going to use label. I'm going to use table view. And 
this pops up, but there are no columns in the table. Okay, so it has data, but we also have to set what columns are going to be used for displaying that data. And this is where I think things are kind of interesting with the way that, that ScalaFX does the tables. Like I said, each one of these students is going to be a row, and we have to set up basically functions that convert from that data into the thing that appears in a single cell inside the table. And we do that for every single column. So I'm actually going to make three col or four columns here, even though I only have three values, because I think it kind of illustrates the power of this approach to doing it. And so this is going to be a new table column, which is something else we're going to have to import up here. Okay. And that table column needs to take some type specifiers. The first type is the type of the data that goes in our rows. So in this case, that is a student. And the second type is what type of data we are going to have for this particular column. And in this case, the first column is going to be their name, so that will be a string, and then we pass it the column name. So that builds a table column. Now we need to tell that column how it converts a student into the student's name. So I'm going to take column one and I set the cell value factory. I was typing that in the wrong order there. So the column's cell value factory needs to be equal to a function. <coughs> this function uh, takes in our uh, the a CDF, um, which is the cell data field. Let's go look at our API here. So I have table view up, but we want a table column. And so a cell value factory, yeah, it takes a cell data features. Okay. <clears throat> In some ways, we don't care too much about the details of what that is. It turns out that it's not going to impact us all that much. But then I need to turn this into a property that has the type of value that we want. And because this is a string, I'm going to get a string property that holds the CDF has a value, and that value is the student that was passed in. And then I want to get the name out of that student. Okay, I'm using string property here, so I better go import that. Skull FX dot beans dot property dot and it turns out we're going to need another thing but I'll start off with the string property okay to me that sounds like an interesting place to try running make sure that I don't have too many typos in here oh so I have the I made the, the column but I have not yet added it to our table. So let's come down here, let's do table, and we're going to add to our table. I'm just making it a list because in just a bit we are going to have a column two and a column three and a column four. But let's see, oops, table.columns. I can't add these to the table itself. And there we go. So you can see we have a table. It has the names in it. We've only set it up with one. We can have a sort order or no sorting on it. So yeah, so there's some interesting functionality. Our table takes up the whole thing, but we want to add some more columns to it. We'll come back in the next video. We'll add columns to this and we'll also give it some interactivity.